So my name is Mahmoud, uh, the founder of Swahili Port Hub. Um, at Swahili Port Hub, when we started it as a tech space, uh, and then later on we fused technology with arts, we actually put innovation at the center of everything that we do. So uh, what that means is that we need to get innovation, innovative ideas from majorly young people. Uh, and these ideas are ideas that are solving societal problems because when uh, thriving businesses or even social enterprises are the ones that are based on solving certain challenges that they see within the community. So when we started Swahili Port Hub, uh, what our intention was to move the conversation of having tech spaces away from just in Nairobi and also putting Mombasa at the center of it. So we started the hub here in Mombasa. Uh, and, and then in Mombasa we thought it's unique rather than just having it as a tech space. We, we do some art. That's how we, we, we put together the Swahili port where the port brings together all creatives in technology and, and, and arts. So after starting that, we were participating in the Nairobi Innovation Week. So we sat down as a team from Swahili Port and thought, why should we always go to Nairobi to showcase our innovation? And that's when the idea of, uh, of uh, Pwani Innovation Hub came into being. So we started the first inaugural Pwani Innovation Week in 2018. And, the next, the, and then we also had a successful one also in 2019. And the intention of the Innovation Week was to showcase innovations not only in technology, but any kind of innovation that brings efficiency, that solves certain problems within society. Uh, and, and most of them, by the way, are spearheaded by young people because the majority of our population, over 75%, is young people. So, uh, and, and, and we've been doing the Innovation Week every end, the first week of December. Uh, we actually, uh, we actually uh, did not do the 2020 version because of COVID. Uh, 2021, we intend to do it a, a hybrid of virtual and physical. So, and for us to do that innovation week in, this, in December, we need to have built a number of innovations over the years. And is once you are within in our program, we consider you part of our community. And, and even when you grow, Mm -hmm. Our motto is you also need to lend a hand, the same way you are supported. So during Teaching Thursdays, we encourage the alumni, we encourage people who have gone through some of this to come and support now the younger ones. So it is something that is a culture here at Swahili Port Hub, where once you are here, you will always be a member, regardless of whether you are in the US, we have people who have gone out of the country through either scholarships or other opportunities, we actually tap to the same networks, and, and it's good that nowadays we do a lot of things virtually. So even lo geographical location no, is no longer a barrier. Secondly, is we also want, even when we are doing the innovation, we don't want every year we deal with new people, while we do not know the ones that are successful two years ago where they are. We also want to, to, to showcase those who have walked this journey so that we make sure they are actually every day as, as years pass or months, they are actually becoming better and bigger. I mean the Pitching Thursday. Uh, Pitching Thursday started a couple of years ago because at Swahili Port we are over five years old now. Uh, and we, we say we can, every, every Thursday we had members of our community who had business ideas, who had certain innovative ideas. So we started this one so that they can go pitch in front of the community, and then the different people in the community can come and critique or, or give them ideas on what, which areas to improve on. Some of them will even offer their services. For example, a, a, a young person has a particular idea. He says, I want to do this particular thing. But he realizes in that for that business to be successful, he needs a marketing or a communications expert, or he needs a tech guy who can build a certain tech solution or an application. 
So within the community, somebody will volunteer, will say, I will play this role, I will help you on the tech side. Somebody else will come, I'll help you on the communication side. And in fact, even with, uh, now that we've been doing some of these presentations mm -hmm. virtually, it has opened an, a window for, for some people who are reaching out to us from other counties or even further than Nairobi. So for us, I think the only limitation initially was we were hosting our staff here physically. So we, we, it means somebody needs to travel and come here. But our long-term intention is to work with partners and even have centers that are also re, uh, doing similar activities like, uh, like us. So that even somebody who is in Mokirunge, for example, in Kisaudi, or even somebody who is in Kilifi, or in Lamu, they should be, be able to go to a center that we work with as Swahili Port Hub and they will be able to present their ideas. And then with, with the connectivity, because nowadays a lot of things have moved to online, we will find ways of judging and, and supporting these initiatives uh, to take them to the next level. We had a number of uh, varied responses for those who are pitching. There are those who have become very successful and now they are big businesses, some like Tech Kids Africa, uh, we have Minat Bakery, uh, we have Roca Bags, we have, uh, the, the, there is a young man who is building apps for uh, SMEs, small businesses, to find their tax. So there are those that have been successful. We've also had those who have given up, those who have tried, attempted, failed, failed, and they feel that business is not for them. But what we do is also to encourage them that uh, in failing you learn. And when you fail even a number of times, it does not mean that uh, it's business is not for you. I think for, for what we tell them is, uh, every time you fail, get to learn something out of it, and eventually you will get it right. And, and when these people do this presentation, they don't pay anything. In fact, we, we, we as Swahili Port, we'll make sure we put up the platform. We even uh, try and do it live on social media. We provide all the basic uh, things that are needed for a successful event. And we also mobilize people to come and see both virtually and physically. Uh, the challenges that we were first going through was uh, actually understanding labor, on, uh, just the labor of uh, producing this because my partner and I are not professionally tailors. Uh, we just had the idea and what we have to do is outsource it to someone else. But uh, we are lucky enough to get a, a training, a free training sponsorship by the county government where we can understand the basics. So that when things are really tough and we can't find labor to actually support us in this, we actually get into the machines and try and do it ourselves. Innovation does not have an age bracket. That's why I told you we have people, seniors like me, people who are above 35, above 40, above 50. We cannot close this door for them. Uh, the same way, if somebody, especially during COVID, for a whole year, people are not in school or even during the school years we have young people because of the responsibilities bestowed on them by society they tend to become innovative to survive so they are doing businesses on weekends and even when they are not in school so even such people we encourage them because when you have that entrepreneurship and uh, mindset it's important for us to nurture it but at the same time even as we nurture these young people we still remind them that education is important. But you can do business, but at the same time, educate yourself. Yeah. The people of Mombasa, uh, people of Kwani and Kenya in general, and especially young people, that uh, we all cannot rely on employment, uh, and especially government employment. It employs a very small percentage. Uh, a majority of Kenyans are actually employed by these small, small businesses. For me, it's to encourage young people to look at the challenges around them, innovate, think at ways that they can build certain solutions that will make their life easier, but at the same time, they make something out of it so that we can all fight these issues of unemployment. 
we can't leave it to government alone, but if we work together with government, if we work together with the private sector, if we also use the opportunities around us, because there are so many opportunities that we also have, but you need to knock at the doors. And even when young, certain young people have access to these opportunities, I urge them to share with the rest, especially Wale or Komashinan, because we tend to keep in uh, some of the challenges that we faced, like a lot of other Kenyans, is the COVID, the pandemic. So when the pandemic struck, just like all other economies, I think a lot of people did not know what to expect. So we were forced to close down for almost one year. And uh, this place was completely deserted, where it is a safe space where a lot of young people converge. Uh, so, and then we recently opened the space after the economy was partially reopened by His Excellency the President. So what we've done, because initially we were doing it every Thursday, we had to reduce the frequency. Now we are doing it once per month until and uh, after we now gain traction. Uh, and then also we have the limitation of the number of people who can come uh, and be there at the physical space. So, and, and we also know in terms of movement, in terms of even, even others undergoing mental uh, 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 depression or they're going through a lot of other issues so I know now the numbers have reduced that's why we are doing it once per month and eventually once the numbers are starting going to, to normal then we'll go back to every time uh, when you're talking to investors like, uh, like, like, like a good example is Cass Nadia uh, who came in and uh, she also told us that we can be one of the people to change the Kenyan Navy campaign where we normally support also youth with, uh, in different ways. So yes, that really helped us in really bringing our confidence up and also improving our products. Is we've now put up a system for also tracking. Mm -hmm. uh, because what we do, we've given you the platform first for you to showcase your business. Mm -hmm. Now the next thing is we also try and connect you to the different private and public uh, networks that will provide certain resources to you. For example, we have young people who have no idea about the youth enterprise fund. Uh, they have no idea about the ways of fund, fund or the women fund. Uh, and then there are also certain certain opportunities. Like for example, the one that was launched uh, that we we actually sensitized people here, Bell and Abyss, where through the World Bank, uh, the, the Ministry of ICT and Youth Affairs, were giving. Uh, uh, any young people with ideas between uh, 900,000 or 3 million million abyss. So we also alert them and connect them to certain uh, funding opportunities. And at times it's not only funding. At times people do not only need money. Others just need the market. Others need certain expertise. Others need mentorship and, and which we also try and connect them to mentors, mentors being members within Sohila Hub, or the professionals connected to us whom we convince to provide these services for free. So we try to give people all these things. And then now we are creating a tool that will be able to, to monitor. For example, in one year, we see uh, how were well people. But I think the, 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 the young people are more challenged uh, young people are the ones who do not have jobs. Young people are the ones who are at risk of being uh, driven to whether it is it is uh, criminal activities or other things. So I think it, it, it has been natural because they are the ones who are mostly affected that probably 90% of the people who come here are young people. Uh, my name is John Kamau. I am 31 years old. I come from Mombasa, part in Etwa Kienbeni, that's a past Magori. I, we started this company, this idea of creating banks with a partner of mine who is my childhood friend, he's called Robert. So the company name is called Roca Designs. What we do is that uh, we repurpose billboards and banners uh, to create trendy and uh, eco-friendly banks. And now, with the name Roca, where it comes from is Robert and Kamau, because that's our initial names. 
and uh, we started this in uh, January 2020. That was last year, and uh, we've moved uh, a long way. We've uh, redesigned the bags from the day we started to what you see here today. And what I can say is that uh, we, before the pitching Thursday came, we had some challenges, yes, on uh, our marketing. Because uh, what we could do is just to market to the people we see around, uh, the people we know. And when you go to strangers and give them, and I we tell them that we create bags from billboards and banners, uh, they're a bit hesitant because it's a new product. Uh, but now when they come to Swahili port, where actually we focus on youth and entrepreneurship and uh, businesses, uh, they actually believed in the product because uh, we are linked to uh, an organization uh, that supports youth in, in, in different ways. So that gave us a lot of con a lot from Swahili Port uh, because uh, one of the initiatives called Pitching Thursday, where we have uh, we are asked to actually pitch in front of uh, uh, investors and the community as well. Uh, with that pitching, we can gain a lot in terms of the questions they ask us. Uh, because uh, we got to understand what we need to do in terms of, of marketing uh, so that we can broaden up our market. Uh, we also got a chance and uh, got to learn how to value our company uh, from the questions and the investors who came in. Uh, besides that, the community also support us a lot because during that pitch we actually sold around five, five to eight bags just from the pitch itself. So we can say that it's uh, actually it's really helpful to the community. So, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amina Khalid Ahmed. I'm the founder and cake designer of Mimati Mikey, which is a cake company that deals with freshly baked products. We also do services like setting days at table events and to the students at the baking. Mimati Mikey was found in 2016, and so far it has made great sales. And we have managed to teach around 60 students what we made at the So. The problem that we discovered in the society is uh, there is high rate of unemployment in Kenya. So as you know, quickly we try to uh, we try to create job opportunities for the youth, and uh, we have gluten sugar free cakes, which makes uh, the, the the patients in the hospitals be able to take our cakes. And there's also a, a massifier in cakes. There's also a massifier in cakes which makes the game stay longer, but it's also harmful to the boy. And the solution to our the solution to our problem is we train students and also recruit them and later on we are able to employ them to work in our bakery. And we we have introduced the healthier sugar like agave and stevia, which makes the cake to be healthy and anyone can just take a cake. And uh, who doesn't love nice cakes? We do tasty cakes and that is, our, that is how our clients they give us food. So our market strategy since 2016, we had a, like a low rate of, we had a low sales, but since 2017 or 2018, we managed to sell more cakes uh, during the year. So our biggest competitions are any small bakers in the community and we also have buyers and sale and any cake enterprises in Mombasa. So our unique preposition is we have a touch of secret cake recipes which makes the cake taste nice and we also managed to build a website, a cake website where someone can order cake.